in the morning. Good to have you tuned in. And let's talk about jobs. Finding the right person for the job can actually be a real struggle for some local firms because candidates don't have suitable skills. That's among the findings of a report by the region's Chamber of Commerce. It suggests more than half of local businesses that attempted to recruit new staff in the final quarter of last year found it difficult to fill their posts. In a moment, you'll hear from uh, one Castle Donington firm. But first, Liz Fothergill is the president of the Chamber. Well, quite a shock to us too. I mean, Anecdotally, we've been hearing that there is a problem recruiting all sorts of staff, actually, across the region, uh, but it's taken a really sharp upward turn in the last quarter survey. I I think it's right across the whole spectrum. We've got a a shortage of skilled engineers, which we need to to feed our, our very vital transport manufacturing economy through to every t- type of, of person you might you might imagine from um, people to work in the food industry um, chefs uh, people for the transport uh, logistics industry our uh, tourism and hospitality child care workers it seems everybody is reporting a problem well danny park is here danny's head of audit at castle donnington business solutions firm pkf cooper parry good morning good morning uh, have you had problems recruiting what, what sort of problems uh, yeah, the, the, the difficulties we're having at the moment recruiting are with qualified accountants. Um, I think the problem stems back from the recession, so sort of 2008, 2010, where many firms cut back on their recruitment of, of graduates and, and school leave at that time, um, which means that now, sort of five, six years on, um, those people aren't qualified, whereas they would have been if, if they'd have been taken on at the time. So there's not as many qualified accountants out there as, uh, as we need. It almost sounds as though business is to blame itself. In, in some respects. In a certain way, yeah. You know, we, we had to make decisions at the time that we thought was right um, when times were tough. Um, and we all remember those times and we had to do what we thought was right. But um, what it has meant is that now, you know, a few years on, there's not as many qualified Nobody houses. got the, the opportunities then, so there's no experience now. Absolutely right, yeah. And, and the way to put that right is to, is to take more people on now and, and give them the training that they need. Liz Fothergill earlier on was talking about um, what they call soft skills as well and, and sort of basic life skills, saying sometimes people just don't have the ability to enter the world of work, regardless of, of career-specific abilities. Is that something you encounter? Um, a, a little bit. I think that's always been the case, to be honest. I think that there's always um, great school leaders out there who've got lots of confidence and lots of ability um, and lots of intellect, um, and others who perhaps have got the intellect but not quite got the, the confidence and the sort of the interpersonal skills and the rapport-building skills. That's always been the case. I think the more help schools can give, the more help uh, you know, bodies like the Chamber can give, the better, but also the more help employers can give. And, you know, one thing that we do at PKF Cooper Parry is, um, is go to schools and help them with interviewing skills, literally just to, you know, to help the kids on how to conduct themselves in an interview. And I think the more we can do, the better. And, and more businesses need to be doing that kind of thing, do they? Because we, we often hear this sort of bemoaning of, of what the education system is churning out. You need to get in there and say, look, this is what we're looking for. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think schools and the education sector is an easy target, if I'm honest. I think you know, schools do a fantastic job on the whole, and there's lots of fantastic kids out there um, that leave school incredibly passionate about about their career, um, full of ideas, full of innovation. I think you know the kids nowadays, compared to when I was at school, have got far more innovation, and uh, you know the world of technology now has helped that. So I think the more businesses can do to go in and, and help, um, you know, the, the schools to give kids the, the softer skills, the, the better. I think we do have a duty to do that. Yeah. When it comes to employers, you know, sounding this alarm that we're hearing this morning, saying you know there's a, a problem getting the right skills, we can't find the right candidates. I mean. It, should we be worried by this, or, or, or is it just employers being a bit picky? Um, no, I, I don't think it's so much being picky. I, I just think it's, um, you know, if, if employers want the best people, you have to work hard to get those best people. And I think everybody you see come through the door is not going to be right for your business. Um, if you have high standards and you know what you're looking for, then, you know, by <clears throat> by that very nature, not everybody's going to be able to, to hit those standards. Um, I think the more we can help with the general quality of our school leavers um, coming into the marketplace the better but you know I, I don't think um, I don't think employees are being picky they just want you know, the best people for that particular role on the other side of the coin I mentioned earlier on in, in Derby alone for example in December there was over 3,000 people seeking employment what, what would your advice be to, to someone who's trying to get you know into their, the, their career that they want at the moment trying to find employment full stop and, and hearing this oh we can't find people uh, I'd, I'd 
I'd encourage people to, to really understand what their passion is um, and what their strengths are and go for roles that play to those strengths. And if, when they go for an interview, um, what I look for as, as an employer, as an interviewer, is somebody to come in with confidence, with rapport building skills um, and with a real passion about what they want to do. And someone who's done a bit of research into what we're like as a firm and what, you know, what we do. Um, there's nothing worse than me asking people what they know about our firm and then not really knowing anything other than what our name is and, and what we do. You know, they, they've got to have shown some interest and show that they actually want the role. Um, is this a problem? I mean, I'm, I'm very struck by the, the basic scenario you outlined at the, the beginning of this interview, that, you know, because of the way the economy's been, you know, people yeah. haven't been given the opportunities, and that is part of the problem that is now needing to be addressed. Is that something that's going to hold back growth, potentially? Uh, potentially, but I think that's just the nature of, of the economy. That's always been the case. In recession, people um, close down and, and tighten up their, their recruitment. And then when the times then start getting better, people bemoan the fact that there's not enough skilled people out there. That, that's always happened. Um, and I think, you know, th there's not much we can do about that now other than taking people on, as many people on as we can, and giving them the skills so that we can build the team that we need for the future. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks for Danny having me. Danny Parkes, uh, Head of Audit at Castle Donington Business Solutions Firm, PKF Cooper Parry. The news when you wake up. The Breakfast Show with Ian Skye on BBC Radio Derby.